I do not know what Anish Giri had for breakfast, but it's like he was possessed today by the ghosts of Morphe and Tal, because this sacrificial game is out of this world. It's the final round of the Tata Steel Masters. His opponent is a fellow Dutch countryman, Max Wardammer, lower rated, yes, but really strong and on the rise. What did Giri have in store? Well, let's check it out. He opens with knight f3, d5 on the board, and pretty soon we get b3. He's going for this b3 cowboy stuff, sideline, but it gets so aggressive so fast. And the tournament situation is fascinating, by the way. More chess to come later. Smash subscribe if you haven't done already. We get e6 played. Bishop b2 on the board. Bishop d6, c4, the classic English move. Now we get castles, knight c3 and c5. Black takes the center here, but white wants to attack. And it starts in this game with pawn to g4. Very exciting opening. You know, sometimes white attacks with h4. Queen on c2, bishop on d3. If d4, the knight hops to e4. Really fun line. I've had it many times. So knight c6 was played in response. Why not captures, by the way, will rook g1. And I don't want to keep going and going on the line, but soon the knight clears out of the way. The bishop opens up. Sometimes the queen can join the attack. It's huge for white. So you're best advised not to touch the pawn. That's why the knight develops. Now g5, and it's such a rich position. You can already hop here with the knight with a legitimate game. Or knight g4, heading for e5. Or knight e4, as played in the game. Now this pawn is under fire. You know, we talked about not taking it previously, but things slightly different here. You are best advised to defend it, which Giri does. And now I'm drawing on the board the best moves for black. F5 is an option. A6, rook b8. All of them carry on with a theme here where you sack d5 if white wants to take twice there but you're not well advised to do so. The bishop will move, the queen will open up, black gets a great game when white's still stuck in the center and undeveloped. But Max goes for rook e8. None of those moves mentioned by the engine. We get queen c2 pressuring the knight. You know, Geary not interested in trying to win that pawn as mentioned. Development is the order of the day. And now with that pressure on the knight, the best way for black to play here is with knight b4, queen retreats, and then look for some b6 stuff, bringing the bishop to this sensitive diagonal. But it was missed. Max plays the very natural natural knight takes on c3 that one was of course very very pressured but giri gets a huge attack now now why not takes with the bishop looks so natural but then e5 is a great move blunting the bishop and even though you leave this pawn surely this is great for white well this is the sting at the end of the tail knight d4 we see the point of this stuff because if pawn captures you open up with check, then you win this bishop, great game. And if you're not capturing with the pawn, well, what are you doing? Stuff's under fire. If you have to give your bishop, not good. Black doing well. So that is why pawn takes was played. Killing the bishop, yes, but stopping the knight d4 tactics after e5 and cd. So g6 was now played. It prepares knight e5, as we'll see h5 from giri he could have also castled queenside there but he's being very direct now knight e5 played knight captures bishop captures and we see the point of starting with g6 because now if f4 you can slide back to this long diagonal if h6 bishop h8 and you've shut down your own rook so Giri just castles the king, now bishop g7, voluntarily played, anticipating f4, which Giri charges on with, and now e5 from Max, played, great move, sacking a pawn, but you have to get this dead bishop into the game. That's why he plays it, it's good positional understanding. And the game just explodes now. Giri takes on g6, h recaptures always recaptured towards the center in general plus this one is covering the square for now 
Bishop d3 played, encouraging e4, but not advised here. The bishop simply slides back, and your center's, of course, collapsing. So, that's why instead we see takes on f4, best move. Sorry, I forgot to mention, you can take here with the rook. It is a good move, but Geary didn't want to encourage the black development. You know, he just wants to go for the jugular and kill this king. So that's why bishop d3 takes here played, pawn recaptures, and now amazingly, black is doing quite well here if you find bishop g4 hits this rook and somehow it's uncomfortable. If you challenge the e-file, well black can trade some pieces, start bringing these ones into the game. If you go rook d2, preparing to double after bishop g4, then there's rook e3 invasion stuff. I'm deliberately not clicking into the lines. It's a long game, there's variations galore. Don't wanna get too lost. But queen c7 was played instead of bishop g4 and now Giri turns the screw with with rook h4 covers this move supports the pawn of course as well which was attacked and prepares to double maybe the queen triples so takes on c4 played if you have to recapture with the bishop you're heading in the wrong direction you know bishop f5 could be coming the rooks join black consolidates so what does giri do yes you guessed it you maybe saw the thumbnail this is where he unleashes hell maximus styli from gladiator he smashes through on g6 this is truly an epic attack from anish giri so this is the first of three brilliant moves, brilliant sacrifices in this game. What's he got for the piece? Well, two connected passes. This really reminds me of a Kasparov game back in the day. He sacks a whole rook, I think, for these connected F and G pawns. Now, there's huge threats here. You want to go queen f7, exchange the ladies, but you see the evaluation bar react. You've just blundered a move. If you want to test your tactical st uh, skills, pause the position here as a move for white to win the queen well done if you found rook h8 because the bishop can't capture it's pinned of course king has to take forced and the queen drops and obviously this is about to shut the trap really nice stuff so that's why king f8 prepares queen f7 and you don't run into this tactic bishop not pinned so f5 from giri he's looking for f6 of course Queen f7 played, you just can't save this bishop, and now we get queen d6 check. Not exchanging pieces, going for the attack, the king sidesteps, but of course, what if queen e7? There's so many variations, but this is the rough thing. However you take, then you push f6, you win back your piece, and you have great uh, great position here. Material level, but the black king is naked. This is the problem. You get invasions like this, or if king g6, you check. You know, if king slides back here, then you open up the dark squared bishop. White always has the initiative when you win the piece back. So neither of these pieces blocked. We get king g8 played. Now f6 comes, and it's so hard to deal with this. You know, why not bishop f8, chase the queen? We'll look at this for a switcheroo back to h2 and now the h8 square is woefully unprotected. Queen can't get across, bishop can't get across, you know, not without sacking a piece. White doing great. So the bishop has to remain. Queen g6 therefore played. Excellent defensive move. Threatens to take with check. So queen f4 covers that pawn here, and now queen f5 played. It wasn't the best, but it's so tough to keep defending with best play. Bishop f5, best move, then the queen can take with check. Attack goes on, it's a different game. But queen f5 was played in the game. Giri goes queen g3, doesn't want to trade, stays with this pawn, and now this bishop develops to e6. Again, what if bishop f8? You know, now you can't go queen h2, threaten that mate. This drops with check. But now there's rook f4. It's a real complicated game. But after the queen moves, well, bang, you go check. You fork these two pieces. You're about to make a queen. If takes, obviously you sack your queen. So many tactics. So you can't move the bishop. 
Bishop e6 played, best move, connects those rooks. We now get takes on g7 and not king recaptures immediately. Again, it's not good. Huge attack coming with g6 actually is the best move. There's just so many problems with both rooks joining the attack. There's checks come, whoops, misfire. There's checks coming along here as well. Everything like that. So bishop f7 was on the board. Best move. Now we get rook f4, putting a question to the queen. It jumps to e6 here, and now queen h2 from Giri. He's threatening mate in one. King takes, forced, and now here. Giri unleashes a double brilliancy. This is truly fantastic. Who is this guy? The guy who makes all the draws, right? We poke a bit of fun from his 2016 candidates tournament. He made 14 draws in a row. Not today, not this tournament, not this guy. He smashes through on f7, gives up an exchange. How awesome is this? If king captures, not played, well then the queen invades. King f8, the rook joins the party, you get mated. So, queen takes was played here, but now can you find the finishing finesse? This is really not an easy move to find. Very, very well done if you're able to spot pawn to g6. All of the attacking forces used here, masterful by Anish Giri, and so much stuff to analyse. You know, what happens if queen takes pawn simply? Well, rook g1, and if you get something like this, you've got a queen for two rooks, a naked exposed king, and a bishop. You know, black's just not long for this world. If instead you take with the king, will still you get attacked? You know, you get forced to the f-file where you lose your queen. Or you get forced here where you just get mated very, very soon. You know, all collapsing. So you just can't touch this pawn. That's why queen e6 was played instead. But now how about this for a final? Brilliant move. They just keep coming in this game. Here's the move. If you go queen h7, it's good but it's not as best and it's not as beautiful as rook d7 check, which forced resignation from Max. What a move. If queen recaptures, then there's check and you're losing your queen. Once again, it's a lost game. If the rook blocks, then there's check, king f6 and queen h4 check. Look at that. Pawn drops, you win the rook, hitting the queen. Again, it's an overwhelming advantage. What's the final thing to analyse? No takes, no blocks. What if pawn takes, uh, king takes pawn even? Well, then rook d6 is a nice one. Now you're skewering laterally instead of vertically, or whatever the word is. What a game by Anish Giri. One for the ages. Just incredible. And here's the best part. We've got like three or four guys now on tied first place. So it's going to tie breaks as soon as the Prague versus Firuja game is done. So I'll be looking to get another video up later this evening. I hope you enjoyed this one. Smash subscribe to never miss a future one. And check out the video on screen for another epic game. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.